plaque là, elle fait 18 cm. Immédiatement, j'ai su que je ne me relèverais pas tout seul. J'ai su que ce n'était pas possible. Quoi. Que si je devais me, me bouger de la route, et heureusement, ça n'a pas été le cas parce que j'ai été immédiatement pris en charge, euh, il aurait fallu que je rampe. Ce n'était pas seulement mon erreur, mais une partie de ça a été mon erreur. Donc il y avait une fracture assez complexe du plateau tibial externe. J'ai travaillé vraiment fort pour arriver à cet endroit où je pouvais faire un travail de faire de faire mon bike. Et j'ai endangé ça en faisant cette erreur. Il y avait une big guilt there for me. It was really special. In a way, it was better because before the race, I felt no pressure at all. Usually before a race, I'm, I'm a mess, but this time it was it was different because I had no idea if I could do it. It was a thousand K, almost 25,000 meters of elevation, about 48 hours of riding non-stop, and it was impossible for me to know if my knee would be up to that task. And so I was like, okay, maybe I can do it, maybe I can't, but if I just finish the race, it will be a victory, because it will mean that seven months after this terrible, terrible injury, I am able to complete such a crazy, difficult course. Every time my, my knee hurt a little bit, I was super nervous. I was like, okay, no, this is too much. I can't take it. Last night I was deep in a hole. Sometimes I can't find my power, but last night I was not even looking for it. I was just, uh, just pedaling like a zombie. But today, today it got better. It's still hard, tired. My legs felt like uh, two tree trunks. Yeah, at some point I just I just completely forgot about the knee. I completely forgot about the surgery. I was just in another race, and I was doing good. And when I was racing, and when I was doing well, I was like, okay. You made a mistake, but there's no consequences. My last race was in October, and it was similar. It was a thousand k, twenty thousand meters of elevation. And when I was when I was racing this one, I was like, "Fuck me, it's hard." It felt so hard. We were together from. Uh, I would say 50 kilometers before the finish. We're in this game of watching each other, being patient, trying to figure out when we would attack. It happens really rarely to have two riders that are this strong and so close. When I raced the Italy Divide in 2019, I was in, I was in first and um, James Hayden caught me um, on the final kilometers of the last climb and he, and he asked me if I wanted to finish with him in the joint first position. He felt like the downhill couldn't be what would, uh, um, what would be the judge of who was the better cyclist, you know. This one was different because the, the finish was the top 
of the climb. After that, that I mean, there was no downhill. So the first one to make it to the finish would be the best one, even if it's only by a few seconds. And then we took that turn. I was trying to, to have the right strategy and it was like, okay, I think when, when there's going to be 200, maybe 300 meters, that's when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack. He opened a tiny gap and I managed to close it. And then I was like, okay, now it's my time to do it. It's my time to, to attack for the first time. And, and I, I made sure that, yeah, it would not be able to keep up with the, with the kind of power that I had at this time. I did it. I just was back in racing, you know. What will be the, the, the image that people will remember when they think of Transpirini 2021? Will it be Ulrich's amazing performance, which is pure madness, or will it be the, the sprint finish for second place? And I think it could very well be the sprint finish for second place. It's not only a matter of, of, of winning for the sake of winning, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of, you know, performing, winning sometimes, not all the time. But it's also a, a matter of, of, you know, giving people emotions.